Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about things that bother you and read factors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do you do when you find something while working that is not directly related to the thing that you're working on, but you want to refactor it? And the short answer is you need to understand the value of the refactor and you need to have a process for how to deal with non-critical work. Let me explain. So the person here had a little bit of a story stating basically that at his previous company had an issue where he basically was told that if something isn't directly related to the work that he's doing in, in the present or the product that he's currently delivering, he shouldn't be refactoring it, he should ignore it, he should just move on, right? Just because of this age old thing that business people will have and that is delivery speed. That's the thing that they, are care, they care most about. That's the most primary concern. Now this was a bit of a problem for the subscriber or this didn't sit all that well, which is understandable from an engineer's perspective. And so basically how do we deal with this? How do we figure out, the, because the thing is that if we don't do anything, it's just a matter of time before that project falls to, well, it falls, to get, it falls apart uh, or rather the legacy will start to grow. And it's, um, I will say that the best analogy I can use here is pretty much it's like weeds. That's a very good analogy. It's like a garden full of weeds. You can let a few of them be around and that may not make much of a difference, but if you completely ignore it and they are left unchecked, they will take over the garden at some point. And so th this is a tricky thing because in general you can think of it this way. The rule of thumb for what's relevant and what's not relevant or if you're going to be allowed quote unquote to fix something or not fix something is measured in how adjacent the refactor or the fix that you want to or the improvement that you want, how closely tied is that into the current work that you are doing? This is why I usually promote that anything that you can do, like if like being a Boy Scout, that's kind of where this comes from, guys. Boy Scouting doesn't mean that you go necessarily somewhere out in the code base where nobody really is working with anything and then just fixes something arbitrarily. It's more about, oh, I'm working on this story here and now and that, that requires me to change a piece of code that has been around for longer than, you know, it's, it's a piece of code that has been around for a while. And then I find something that isn't all that nice. Well, I'm already here. Maybe I should just fix that up even though I didn't write this code and then the code base will be nicer. This is the like, this is the heart and the soul of the Boy Scout rule because it basically means that if you're already there doing work that is current and relevant for today and you can do something to make this a little bit nicer, do it. But don't go off on your own and just start fixing things arbitrarily because that in the perspective of the company or for quite a lot of people is going to be waste. It's going to be you not having your priorities straight, priorities straight, which is the thing that this person was experiencing. So if you still want to deal with this, I can give you what I do with my team. And I've done this for quite some time now and pretty much everybody, it, it works extremely well. And it's not, it's actually very simple to get the, I, I have, so far I've never met a stakeholder at any company who doesn't like buy into this idea. So basically what you should, should promote or suggest to your stakeholders and your team is to say that I want us to have an, an improvement budget or an error, a bug budget. You can label it how you want. Improvement budgets may not be the best thing, I call it the bug budget. It fundamentally becomes the same thing regardless of what you pick, but it's more of a politics thing there. Bug budget is probably better because bugs are bad. Improvements are things that people may not be so interested in. But anywho, so you want a budget for fixing errors. And basically what that means is that you state to your stakeholder something along the lines of, well, the thing is that there are all these tiny little issues that we of course can't just go and fix all at once. But if we leave them, as I was saying with the garden, if we leave it complete, if we just ignore all of these bugs, like the system will just start to slow down. This is very key here. Make sure that they realize that the impact of having more and more bugs is one part that the system becomes more unreliable, but also oh, that 
it's going to make us slower. That's usually something that gets their attention because slower means longer delivery cycles and slower delivery cycles means longer time to market. And that's something that directly affects the business and probably themselves in a very personal manner. So by communicating that we can fix this by just having a maintenance mindset and allocating a little bit of time each week to address issues that are important to address lest they of course get out of hand most stakeholders and managers and people like the teams and so forth they will understand the value of this so in my experience for a very small team if like you're say that you're just say two three or like it depends it depends on how much of a budget that you can afford but for a small team one maybe two days a week tops for one developer is is going to be good enough it's not going to be what you want because most likely depending on how fanatic you are about these sorts of improvements you might want to, oh yeah we're just going to do this whenever we want but that's just not sustainable a budget is is the compromise and unfortunately compromising is the best approach even to things that you may feel are the most important things ever so by just stating that, that oh, once a week for one day, we're going to have one developer who focuses on a backlog of uh, or fixing some bug, then if you can get that buy-in, that means that you, now you actually have a chance. Now you have actual, actual time that can be taken out of your work to go and fix things that are not completely relevant to the thing that you are working working on. Which means that if you just abide by the Boy Scout rule, so you fix things that you see as an issue if they're relevant to the thing that you are working on, and you have one day where you're, or one or two days, just a few days, where people go to the backlog with bugs and reported issues and so forth and just fix them, now you have a structure for maintaining the system over time. Now you have a process for fixing all of these things. So something that is now very important is that you make damn sure you must you must nurture a culture in your team that no issue is too big or too small this is key now guys it may seem silly but it is so important that you have some issue tracker or something like that something like this where you basically log every single thing that is wrong with the system it can be the silliest little tiny dumbest thing in the world it can be that the color of the button is slightly wrong or that there it might be a very critical thing that oh on every tuesday the system crashes i mean um, hopefully you're going to prioritize something like that but you uh, hopefully you see my drift like it's not my point is that don't focus on the size of the issue if it is an issue log it now the reason why you want that is because if you have one day maybe two days tops to fix things sometimes you're going to have to borrow some time so you follow the following week you may not do a bug improvement day or something like that because you need two days to fix a larger issue because the larger bugs you should take longer than a day but the smaller issues you can actually you can actually pick them up very quickly and fix them very quickly so you can give a sensation of progress to the team it's like lint it's like these tiny it's like just vacuuming or something like that and what's even nicer about having all of these different sized stories or issues that you want to address is that sometimes due to planning and this is trust me when i say this this is just a matter of time before this happens due to poor planning on your stakeholders part you might find that you have questions or some some problem that exists so that you can't actually work on high priority work the thing that is the focus of the company and instead of just sitting there doing nothing then you can raise your hand and say well we have all of these issues and improvements that we can fill our time with maybe we can do that until the work becomes unblocked instead of them trying to because the stakeholder is going to try to like imagine up something for you to do so that they are so they feel like you're all com continuously working and sometimes they are going to imagine up or like think of something that's useful and sometimes they're not just going to have you do something arbitrarily that doesn't really matter but if you have all of these improvements depend on they are different size you can always pick the issue or the bug that most likely is going to fill the time that is required for you to start working on high priority work again so what i want you to take away from this is basically that 
if you want to improve things and if you find something that is an issue within your code and you want to see if you can help the, mitigate the situation and then you're going to have to think about it in this fashion. Is this re relevant to the thing that I'm doing right here and right now? Because most companies won't, don't, they don't really like if you start like improving things arbitrarily and because it feels to them that as if you're not focusing on the work, even though that's not necessarily true. You're trying to help, but you're not focusing on what's high priority right now. So in order for you to be able to fix all the issues that can gather up over time that aren't relevant to the work that you're doing in the here and now, allocate a bug budget or an improvement budget. Make sure that you communicate to your stakeholders and your team that in order for us to continue delivering on time and, continue and avoiding all of the legacy that is coming our way, we need to maintain these bugs that are and these issues that are considered non-critical. And if we just take one or two days a week for one person, we can actually fix quite a lot of these, these issues and make sure that we continue to live, deliver on time. This is usually a very easy sell and it works extremely well. Have a great day.